The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hello, my name's James Wrigley. I'm a financial advisor and one of the principals of Melbourne-based financial planning firm, First Financial. I've been a long-term listener and contributor to the Ensemble Group and podcast, picking up some amazing nuggets of gold over the years. And through this podcast and the people that I'm able to speak to and interview, hopefully I can continue to deliver some of those nuggets of gold to you. Money GPS is an Australian fintech that has created leading digital advice technology to meet the unserved advice needs of the 90% of working Australians who cannot afford traditional advice. Users take a fully client-led digital journey with access to hybrid human advisor support across superannuation, investment, retirement and insurance topics. Money GPS offers a turnkey solution to financial advisors, helping to future-proof their business by engaging non-advised clients, enhancing referral relationships and achieving scale through a technology and personal advice solution. Hello, welcome back to the podcast. Today, I've got the pleasure of speaking with Carly Thatcher from MBS Insurance. Carly, thank you for joining me at somewhat last minute. This is going to be a quick turnaround, as I just said, but thanks for joining me at last minute for no on the podcast today. No, thanks for having me. Have you done a podcast before? No, no, I'm very green. So, <laughs> I said, we'll just have a chat about what, what you're up to. So, MBS, um, you know, different people from MBS have been on different iterations of, of kind of the uh, – of the Ensemble podcast, there's a lot of them that go out e- e- each week. But for those that haven't caught any of those other uh, episodes, can you talk a bit about what the MBS business is and 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 the type of advice you do? So um, MBS is in insurance only advice. So um, we we don't do any other comprehensive advice. We just just purely do insurance. Uh, yeah, and we've got a lot of referral partners, um, a lot of financial planners, accountants that don't want to do insurance anymore. So um, we get a lot of referrals from them. Yep. Yeah. 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 But and insurance that, only based. Uh, excuse me. Is that mostly what the is that mostly where the clients come from? Those referral partners, whether it's other financial planning businesses or accountants and whatnot. Is there any? Is is there much, if any, at all that somehow comes to you through? Um, like a re- client referrals or anything like that, or is it mostly? Uh, I get a couple. I get a couple of client referrals. Uh, you know, uh, even referrers, brothers, sisters, etc. Um, yes. But majority are definitely financial planners and accountants. Yeah. And I've been in the industry for for many many years. They're the best referrers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I've worked with insurance brokers, um, and I just find that financial planners that they get it. They have an understanding of it. Obviously, they don't want to do insurance anymore, but they are the best referrers because they do have a really good understanding about it. And and accountants are great referrers because the clients have a really strong rapport with their accountants. So they 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 already somewhat understand the the idea of insurance before they come to us. Yep. And, and have you have you been insurance only yourself in terms of your own financial advising? Have you been insurance only for a, for a while now? What's your what's your story in insurance only? I have, so I started um, in financial planning in uh, I think well I, I started in a client services role and then I moved into financial planning in two thousand and six two thousand five two thousand and six and I was a, a bank advisor so I did comprehensive advice. But I was the a wealth advisor, so therefore a lot of my um, a lot of my advice was based around insurance. So that was always my strong strong point. I always delved towards insurance. Uh, I did a, some super retirement planning, etc. But insurance was my generally my go to. And is that, is that kind of how it was broken up for you <laughs> in those kind of bank days? In that clients that were maybe below a particular age or some some way of segmenting. They were a wealth client and so it was more this accumulation style and insurance was a big part of it. Yeah, that's right. So um, we had wealth manager, financial planning manager, and then senior financial planning manager. Yes. And generally you you would see a client with, say, up to 150000 in fund and then anything above that would go would go higher to the financial uh, planning manager. So therefore your majority of your advice was based around the insurance side of things. Mm. Yeah. Is, is there a particular attraction to staying insurance only for you? Like, 
you know, wh- why do you, why do you still do insurance only to this point? I, I think because I, I believe in it, really. Yeah. I, I've seen, you know, the older you get, the more you see, um, the stories you hear, the claims, etc. It's something that I'm quite passionate about um, and I believe in what I'm doing. So it makes things so much, so much easier for me if I actually believe in what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and even like we had a claim the other day that was paid out to a client. He's, he's doing really well. And um, just to, to make that phone call to say, look, you know, you can have a bit more time off if you need, you know, your trauma claims. We'll be receiving it in the next couple of days. It's really, really rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's a bit that I, I don't know how or why, but uh, as long as I've been in financial advice myself, I've personally, like my own clients, said, I, I reckon I'm zero in terms of claims and, and just, you know, just not because they've been declined, just because something hasn't happened to someone. Uh, yeah, right. You know, we've had, like I could think there was a, a client of mine, it was only income protection, but that was a, a policy that was already in force. We kind of took it over he- mm. years ago and she's now back at work, but the income protection was a blessing for for them. But like I'm sitting here scratching my head trying to think of other claims. Like you talk to all of these other financial advisors and like it, it's kind of once that first, once you make that first phone call to say, hey, there's half a million dollars coming your way or, or whatever it is that you, you believe in the power of it. But I'm, I'm kind of 16, 17 years into working in financial advice and and I haven't made that far. I haven't had it. Really? <laughs> really? I, now. I think not far into mine, I, I wrote an income protection policy for a, um, a client and um, she was having a hysterectomy not long after and I thought, oh, they're not going to pay this. And and they did. And it was great. Like it was, yeah. and, and that was, I, I think I was uh, probably, you know, 12 months into the role. Mm. Yeah. So do like different advisors here in, in the first financial, you know, now a Cambo business, obviously they, obviously they have, but. Myself, no. So, so you, so you're in in the in the kind of bank environment for for a little while there early on in your career, and then where did you? Where, what happened after that? Where did you go to after the bank environment? So after the banking environment, I I had a, I had a couple of kids in a few kids in between, and um, then I left and went to um, A and P. Oh yeah. So I worked for a friend of mine owned an A and P practice, so I went and worked there for three three four years, um, but. Again, mainly insurance advice. Um, I, I actually did some mortgage broking along with oh, it yeah. at the time. Wouldn't do it again. <laughs> but um, the insurance, by obviously, you're putting someone in debt, so it, it worked really well together. Yes. Um, and yes, yeah, so I was at A and P for for four years, and then he he sold back to A and P when the whole bowler thing happened. Yeah. I'm not sure if you've interviewed anyone about yeah. that. Yeah, right. but, um, runs really. If they're really tight lipped, they don't they don't yes. want to uh, get themselves in trouble. It seems to be no, what, that's what right. Happens. <laughs> yeah. So um so from there um it was through COVID I went and um I started working with a, a general insurance company mm. uh, doing risk insurance advice, and um I was there for three years. But as I said, the the referrals were there weren't the volumes weren't as much as what we we get now um but it was a it was a great company and um it was as i said it was risk only a lot of uh business insurances so yes. I, i've kind of went from uh personal insurances to to business um buy sell key person so it was a really good learning curve as well yeah yeah what do you find interesting what do you find that mix of you know traditional Income protection, life insurance for someone's personal needs versus their business needs in your in your day to day right now. And is there do, do you get more of one type from one kind of referral source over another? What what's that look like? I get a bit of both, um, especially for accountants. You get a lot of lot of uh, buy sell, and yeah. and then I had one refer or two referral companies now that have I've done theirs. So and then from there you get the personal cover as well. So okay. it's 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 a great referral to get. As yeah. well, and um, just ensuring that their buy sell agreements correct is what uh, you know. It's a real eye opener to some companies to make sure that they are correct and the the sums insurers are right. Um, you know, um, there's certain things. Um, I had one client that thought that they had something in place that if one of them was injured or ill, that they would continue to get paid. Well, that wasn't in the agreement, so that you know to relook at the agreement. So it's quite interesting, um, and yeah. it, it just makes more variety in your role as well. So yeah, so what what level of you know what level of work input do you, do you go into that buy sell bit? Because you know, I've spoken to others over over my journey, uh, and this is kind of back in 
back in bank bank days, there was I remember it being at a bit at some particular event around buy sell, and 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 he this this he was the bank advisor mainly did did insurance. He was kind of saying, I just sort out the insurance policy. The accountant comes to me and says, there's all of this stuff, and we need an and a life policy for X, I just sort out the insurance. But it sounds yeah. like the way that you're working at MBS, you're doing far more than that. We're just uh, – so to work out the insurance, you know, ownership, uh, whether it's buy, sell, whether it's key perks, because you'd be, you'd be amazed how many get that confused, like what's yes. buy, sell and what's key person. So it's once you break that down, there are a lot more questions that you can ask. It's not just about writing the insurance. It's making sure it's, number one, structured correctly, yeah. um, that the sums insured are correct, and, and you do have the breakdowns as well. Like we know, is it covering debt? Is it covering um, loss, loss income, et cetera? So it's, there is a, a little bit more to it. So some may come and say, I don't want you to look at that. I just want you to look at the, the insurance component and that's fine. But when it comes to the agreement or making changes, that's where you, they've got to speak to their lawyer yeah, about that. Nice. Yeah. So I don't give any legal advice. <laughs> <laughs> I have done a couple of legal subjects, but no, I'll leave that to the lawyers. <laughs> so what, like what, So for anyone that's listening, well, like what, what is the difference between the buy, sell and the key person? So for people that don't that don't know, teach me so at the same key time. key person, it, buy, sell is um, more about the ownership. So, um, for example, m- myself and you going to business together, um, we're both we're both married to, to someone else. Um, it's it's more about protecting. So if something happened to me, that there's funds available for you to buy my my spouse out. That's the, the buy sell. Whereas key persons more around. You've got someone in your business that um, generates a lot of revenue, and um, and you want to make sure if something happened to them that the revenue is not affected. So it might be a means of um, having funds available to to recruit someone in to to take over that role, um, you know, recruiting costs, et cetera, um, yeah, an amount for lost revenue. So they're, they're, they're definitely very, very, very different. Yeah. And so that so the key person one's an, in, an injection of money into the business so into the, business the business can keep running. Keep running. It needs That's to right. Yeah. So business paying someone out. What do you do? So I, like I, I attended a course ages ago. I was one of the lawyers. Um, I don't know if they still do it years and years ago. Well, they spoke about like the different ownership structures around around buy sell, and they was got the notes somewhere. But they were saying, "Don't we seeing a lot a lot like this?" But it's far too complicated. Like it should just be this. You know, nine times out of ten, it should be this more more simpler yeah. option. How how are you seeing buy sells being set up? I, and I'm pleased to be a life insurance. That yeah. um, there there can be uh, capital gains issues with with that way. Um, but if they so it, this is where the agreement really comes into play. Yeah. So if um, the client owns it themselves, that way the, the payment goes out to their spouse and then within the agreement it states that, that those funds were used for that. Does and that they make kind sense? Of just give, they just give up their ownership of the shares or the estate Correct. gives up their ownership. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, it, but- it, there was all this thunder in from the notes. It was like kind of owning it the other way around. Like do, do, I, own the, do I own insurance over your life and then if – if if you died, I then need to give your husband the money to buy out your to shares. Buy out. Yeah, but there's that out. way. Or I've seen the the company owns it as well. Um, it, it, yeah. So I've done one re- recently. But if it's key person, yes, the company owns it. But yeah. I think the other way is much more. Um, as long as they've got a buy sell agreement in place, holding it. The other way is much easier, and and you you won't have um, capital gains issues or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How many people at M- at MBS? What's the size of the the, the team? It's, it's big, isn't it? So I'm in the Melbourne office. So just yeah. in the Melbourne office, we've got uh, we've got one, two, three, four advisors. Yeah, five, five actually. So we've got two on there. One's just finished professional year, so um, they put them through their professional year. Another one's just about to finish their professional year. Um, so I think, I think there's about maybe 20 advisors, I think, yeah. across. across. So we're Sydney, uh, Western Australia, and we've got one in Brisbane, Justin. Yep. yep. Yeah, so he heads up the, the Brisbane team, um, but plenty of advisors um, and and we've got – Advisor associate and client services as well. Yeah, right. It's a big, mm. big team. Can big you, team. Can you can you talk through your your process around how you're dealing with insurance advice? Because um, 
you know we've we've done it in in, in the past and do it, continue to do it a, li- a little bit now and but it's not a great I certainly don't enjoy certainly don't enjoy it but how, how do you how do you engage with a, with a new client so an accountant or a financial advisor says hey can you call James to sort mm-hmm. out his insurance yeah how, how do you deal with it so I'll ring James and introduce myself. Um, he'll he'll generally know who I am from the referral. Um, for, as a start, I'd, I'd ask them, have you been through this before? Do you have any insurances in place? Uh, if they do, generally, well, a, a lot of our referrers will send through their insurance details that they've got. So from there, I will um, I'll do a, a just a, a, a table with their current insurances and then a, a market comparison to see where they're at. That table alone can be fantastic for a client because sometimes they don't even know what they've got. So yeah. just to see, I had one client that she emailed me through all this paperwork of, you know, my insurers are the here and uh, we nearly killed a tree, like, you know, if we had to print it out. Yeah. Um, and just tabling what she was paying and, and what she had, she was like, oh, my goodness, we need to do something about it. So that that's really quite powerful. Yeah. Um, then we'll put some discussion points around, you know, um, you know, your income protection is held through super, you know, it could be more beneficial if it was held outside depending on your circumstances, et cetera. Um, and, you know, you've got low levels of life and TPD and just a, a bit of commentary and then have have a meeting after that just so we've had a look at what they've got and we can see that there may be some some things that we can improve on. Yep. Um, and then from there, after the, the meeting, we'll have a discussion. Um, they might tell me, look, I've only got this amount because I've got this massive inheritance coming through or, um, yeah, you're right, we need to increase that. And then from there, we'll send them through a proposed table. Yep. Um, and and the health disclosure as well, just to make sure, um, you know, just so we can get the best outcome for a client, and knowing, you know, whether the, if there's any health issues that we're going to the right insurer that's going to get the best outcome. Okay. Mm. Yep. That r- right at the very beginning, that kind of market comparison bit. So you, so some some of it somehow you get you, you get information of this person's got in X Y Z Z insurance. Where? How are you getting that market comparison? Are you, is it just like through X plan the quotes that come out of there, or do you go directly to half a dozen different insurance providers? Yeah, I I use re- risk researcher and, oh. and and or Omni Life. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And and then that will give us an idea of which insurer is 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 most cost effective. Yeah. Um, but that, that that doesn't mean we're going to, to move to that. Um, there's a lot more to go around it. For example, you know, the income protection. Um, my husband's a bricklayer. I wouldn't move his income protection to the new product um, because he's self-employed and, and, a, and a bricklayer. So um, we're still showing that they're, they're market comparison, but whether we move it, that that's very dependent on yeah. on what the client wants. Client's health, client's occupation, etc. Yeah, and are you sending that that kind of information that you put together? Are you sending that before the meeting, or you're you're that's what you're bringing to the meeting to say, hey, this is a snapshot of what you've got. This is a snapshot of what the market says a million dollars worth of life cover for a male that's thirty nine years old should cost. Mm, and then you've got some talking points that you'll yeah. you'll raise through the meeting. I find before is better um, oh, yeah. because it gets a, a buy-in for the client to say, okay, I need to do something. Um, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, like even as I said, just seeing in front of you that you've only got two hundred thousand death cover and you've got a million dollar mortgage. Wow, yeah, I, I need to do something about this now. So you, you know, they they they're more keen to meet with you and discuss it. Mm. Understand? Yep. Yeah. We we had a whole when we were you know we're not not doing so much insurance ourselves in, in, anymore, but we had like this whole kind of worksheet that we'd go through to say, now what what's your dead? See you this? Yeah, that. The, Blah blah blah, blah to, to kind of get to okay, you should have one and a half million dollars worth of worth of life insurance. Where in your process do you do you do that type of assessment to say you know you've got this and market comparison says that, but hey, we you know we've identified there's a gap here. Where where do you do that gap kind of analysis? I did the gap after after I've had the discussions with them, so I've sent them the the review um, and the discussion point, and then I'll, I'll have a look at that because you know um, it can. That that conversation is really important because you can look at their fact find and they say they've got a lot of investment debt, but that's not a priority for them to have that covered, or it might be a major priority to have that covered, and um, that that way that the 
the income coming from that investment in that is is going to them and that can help with replace the lost income, et cetera. So yeah. it, it can really depend on um what, what the client wants as well. So it that so we have that discussion first and then we'll come out after the discussion to to say um, this is what we recommend as per you know what we spoke about. Yeah, I suppose, and the bit that I've that's just tweaked with in, with what you've just said there, because of where all these clients are coming to you from, like an, a financial advisor or an accountant or whatever, that that financial advisor is probably sharing. James has a mortgage of this much and that much Correct. and all the rest of it. Whereas if it was a brand new client that had just somehow been referred to you, mm. you're going to have to do all of that digging work yourself to find yeah. out what their mortgage is and what's James's income and, and, mm. and all the rest of it. But all of that info is being shared, I would imagine, is being shared with you up front through, through the referral. 80% of my referrals I have a, a fact find with it. Yeah. And um, I mean, as I said, a lot of the time it might be I can look at it and go, wow, they're overinsured. Yeah. We could really do something about the issue, you know, their, their income protection has a 30 day waiting period. They don't need a 30 day waiting period anymore and they're paying 20 grand a year for this. So there's, there's so much we can get from just the back find and, and that really helps with the conversation with the client in the beginning as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Speeds up that, that, that really speeds up your process versus someone else's that just meeting that client brand new for the first time. Brand new. As it, that doesn't have all of that info, does it? So then, yeah, yeah. you can go into the meeting and say, no. Why have you got so much life insurance when well, mortgage is only so small? Yeah, that's right, and um, it saves time for the client as well. Uh, the first thing I said, I'm not going to put you through all that again. I've got this information. Um, where does he to discuss? You know, yeah. you know, have, ask questions and go through what why you've got this cover or why what cover you need or why there's a um, a lack here, etc. Yeah, mm. yeah, and so you're 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 in the office on not on Monday, then there's a bit of a kind of presentation that we, that we had here. It sounds like there's a, there's a lot of work that you're doing with clients around trying to get them to keep cover in the, whereas the default for a lot of people and certainly, you know, the policies we have in force kinds of saying, well, you know, can I just get rid of this altogether? It, can mm. you kind of talk about how are you bridging that gap between someone that go, that's seeming like wants to go from 100 down to zero, mm. but maybe they really shouldn't go from 100 down to zero? What, what are you doing in that space? Well, generally, the, re- the reason why someone wants to go to a, from 100 to zero is cost. Yeah. So if we can help them with costs, that that's a big thing. Um, I had a client that was referred to me and they said, I'm paying this, I don't want to pay this anymore. I did a market comparison and the savings was huge, and they they were like, "Well, no, let's look at retaining." So they ended up retaining some of it. Mm. Um, and as I said before, like with income protection, that, that we're getting a lot of phone calls about income protection and cost. Um, there's many options and many things we can do. So rather than just completely cancel it, we could look at you know re- reducing benefit periods because they're nearing retirement, um, increasing waiting periods. Um, you know, they might have some extra benefits that they no longer need. Uh, so to, it's it's about reducing the cost because yeah. ju- that's the complaints we're getting. Maybe reduce the sums insured because they they don't need that much anymore, um, et cetera. It, it's, it's, it's all about the conversation with the client. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like, you know, doing a market comparison, if it was, if it was my existing client that had all of this insurance, I could do a market comparison with them. Now, every every year or so, do you feel like maybe because everyone's busy and all of these other things that 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 a that a financial advisor that's trying to do all of these different things just maybe isn't doing that and and Is because it- you're engaging with them around insurance, well then you're going to do it sh- straight away. Like, do, do you feel that's maybe getting missed in a lot of other financial I, advisors' process? I definitely think so. Definitely, yeah. yes. Especially, yeah. and and as I said, it might just not be a market comparison. It might be just a, a, a reduction in sums insured. Uh, you know, someone hasn't looked at their their insurance for ten years, and when they took it out, they had three dependent children that are now adults, and their mortgage was, you know, eight hundred thousand, and now it's two hundred thousand. Yeah. So that their, their need has completely changed. So yeah. it, it might not, as I said, it might not just be a market comparison. It might be just looking at the sums insured and 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 um, a needs analysis again to so reduce I get, it. I get the odd, I, 
you know, referral from a bit from an from an accounting group that, that I do a bit of work with, and probably more than half of them are like an insurance type type inquiries. And, and there was one just the other day, and um, kind of the the email that the accountant forwarded on to me was, oh, I haven't heard from my, this particular person for more than more than two years, uh, and it's just that not not keeping contact with them. You know, uh, it would probably more than happy with with the initial process that they went through with insurance, but just haven't done that, that touching base, that, that, that kind of follow-up. Do, mm-hmm. do you have some type of process to, to deal with that? Like how do you deal with renewals and anniversaries and, and so forth? So we have a review process at head off head office runs. Yep. So And um, we get uh, – so a lot of the – the firms that we look after, we get their renewals that come through so we can make a phone call. Um, But the head office runs a renewal process that makes sure that everyone's getting contacted. Is in So Mm. is that renewal in the sense of making sure their premium gets paid for the next next year or or kind of touching base to say, hey, has anything changed in your world? Do we need to? More email or or contacting to say, hey, has anything changed? Okay. Yeah. And yep. so if they if they then flag that something's changed, it might it's passed on to you. It'll be passed on to, to uh, the advisor. Uh, yeah. So mo- most clients have an advisor up. assigned to them, and then yeah. it'll be passed on to the advisor. Yeah. Okay. We get a lot of phone calls around the new renewal anyway because of yeah. The, I would. I think yeah, it's more and more the, the phone calls are and uh, about a lot more than they used to be because of yeah. cost. I, I think you know everyone knows cost of living, et cetera. So everyone's looking at what they're spending now. Um, the ones that probably sneak by are the premiums that are coming out of superannuation that yeah. they don't notice. And that, when they do really start to notice, they'll look at their balance and they'll say, oh, wow, um, my balance hasn't gone up. I'm nearing retirement. And then, and obviously when they're nearing retirement, the premiums are much higher. That's when they'll start looking at it. So, um, you know, it's that, that, and then it, they come to us, and that's when you realise, oh, oh, you're nearing retirement, you're overinsured. Let's get it down, and um, yeah. So they're realising probably later than they should when it's coming out, when it's coming out of their superannuation. Yeah, I wonder mm. if you could somehow. I'm sure you can, like through the through the financial planning software X plan and all the rest of it to to set a renewal date, and then you put some standard template email in your system that that once it hits a particular date, it just flicks out this email that says, "Hey, has anything changed? Do we need to need to do we need to?" It? I think that's what happens. Um, mm, sure we've got, can. yeah. So we've got Grant that does all that. He's he's amazing. Yeah. Um, he sets up all these, and uh, there's a you know the client can log in and update their details. If they update their mortgage, it it comes through to us straight away. So if they oh, change yeah. their mortgage, yeah, and we get a notification um, that James has updated his. Uh, his income details. So we'll yeah. give them a call and say, let's look at your income protection, make sure it's reflecting your in- your income, et yeah. cetera. Mm. Yeah. How many how many clients would you help a year? Like is it is it a big number? I would imagine it's a big number. Yeah. So we uh, we we get a lot. Um so the Oh, I couldn't give you a number actually. Yeah. How many? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you need you're going to need to. I guess the, the point is you're going to you're going to need those automated systems in the back end to definitely to, to deal mm-hmm. with that. You can't mm-hmm. you can't be doing it yourself. But I don't know, getting a a list from Tal who's who's up for renewal this month. Oh and no, on the phone and calling them, you'd, you'd you'd lose all your time. You would lose all your time. As is, I don't know how it's set up because I'm that's not my <laughs> no, <of course laughs> my area of expertise. Yeah. But it, it works really well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, good. Where, where, where to from from here for you? Do you think you'll you'll stick on the insurance only side of the fence? Do you do you feel like you might gravitate back to to more general financial planning? Not shaking your mm. head there. Uh, yeah. Definitely insurance. Definitely insurance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I feel I've been doing it now insurance only for oh, I think six years. And um, it's it's what I know. You stick with what I, what you know. Yeah. And I, as I said, I love it. I've seen, I, I as I said, I've seen you know I've had seen claims paid, etc. But I've also seen people go through through things where you know there was no insurance, and you know to think that it's just it's not something you want. So if I can stop that from happening, that's a that's a big thing for me. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it, yeah. it's good to see. It's good to see a business clearly thriving, you know, in an environment, you know, when commissions were reduced and all the rest of it. There's all this uproar around 
our business is going to survive, you know, can they, can they, is the under insurance problem going to get worse because all mm-hmm. these businesses end up closing down? But, uh, but the way you and, M- and MBS are, are working, and there's others out there, but but the way you're all working, uh, it seems to it, it shows that you can run a can, run yeah. a profitable business, absolutely, uh, in, in the world that we're in. Absolutely, mm, yeah. MBS have, have done a f- absolutely fantastic job yeah. with that. Yeah, they yeah. they saw the market move and and you know they've thrived on it. Mm. Everyone everyone got out and they've gone they've gone all, all in. So uh, the good commissions went up again. But <laughs> <laughs> it would certainly for those businesses that have decided to go all in on insurance. If the <laughs> commissions went went back up again, they'd be they'd be laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good. All right, Carly. Well, thanks for thanks for joining me this afternoon. Thank you. Uh, good to good to catch up, and I'll see you around the office when you're in the office. Wonderful. Next. Thanks, James. Appreciate thanks. it. See you. Bye.